The water stored by Egypt's Aswan High Dam, constructed between 1960 and 1976, hides secrets that date back to ancient times. Several ancient Egyptian treasures were saved from a watery grave in the nick of time by UNESCO, including the famous rock-cut temples at Abu Simbel. Yet, what was lost? Entire Nubian villages were swallowed up by the dam's reservoir, Lake Nasser, and 100,000 people lost their homes. Dive into the depths here with us today on Intrigued Mind and uncover the sunken history of the Aswan High Dam. Before we get into what lies beneath, first, here's a quick crash course on why the dam was built in the first place. The ancient Egyptians built an entire civilization around the life-giving waters of the Nile. But Mother Nature, being as fickle as she is, some years there was flooding, which destroyed vital crops, and other years there was drought, such as the one recorded in Genesis. So, to that end, the Egyptians over the centuries have sought a way to maintain some control over the river. The first attempt at reigning in the Nile's silty waters dates back to the 11th century, when an Arabian engineer named Ibn al-Hatam was summoned by the Fatimid Caliphate to conduct what today we might call a feasibility study into controlling the floodwaters of the Nile. This engineer tossed the idea into the too hard basket. Another attempt would not be made until the late 19th century, when British engineers constructed the Aswan Low Dam. These guys were Sir William Wilcox, the quintessential colonial toff, Sir Benjamin Baker, who had a handlebar mustache that could rival Wyatt Earps, and Sir John Aird, who was on board for the 1902 opening of the Aswan Low Dam, where he was officially recognized for his work. But as it turned out, the accolade came a little too soon. By 1946, the Aswan Low Dam was spilling over, so back to the drawing board. Enter Greek engineer Adrian Daninos, who commenced planning the new high dam. This is where the waters get a little muddy, if you'll pardon the pun. The Egyptian king Farouk was not a fan of Daninos' plans, but in that same year, the monarchy was overthrown. Oops. And the new sheriffs in town, the free officers, gave the plan the green light. Naturally, being a Cold War era thing, there was some argy-bargy about who would bankroll what and for what purpose. The Soviets stumped up the funds in the end, and they worked in unison with Egyptian engineers led by Arabian contractors to get the job done. Now, finally, we can literally get to the bottom of the sunken history of the Aswan High Dam. Buin Fortress was constructed in 1850 BCE, during ancient Egypt's Middle Kingdom era, under the reign of Pharaoh Sinusret III. The 33 feet high fortress was used as a rest stop for traders and as protection against the Nubians. This formidable complex housed 1,000 infantry and 300 archers. Its history features one big hitter from the era, Queen Abshetsut. The queen ordered a temple to Horus, god of the sky, to be built within its walls. Ironically, Horus's temple would never see the sky again once the waters of Lake Nasser, the reservoir created as a result of the dam, flooded in 1964. Thankfully, UNESCO saw the writing on the temple wall and moved quickly to rescue a number of temples from being lost to progress forever during the 1960s. Let's take a look at them. One such temple is the Great Temple of Abu Simbel. Ramses II had commissioned the building of this temple in honor of none other than himself. Talk about a temple-sized ego. Building commenced in 1264 BCE and took 20 years to complete. By the 6th century BCE, the temple had been covered by the sands of time and was not rediscovered until 1813 when a Swiss explorer stumbled upon it. It could have been covered again, but this time by water, had UNESCO not intervened. They saved the 108 feet high temple and its four 66 feet high statues in 1967 by cutting them into blocks and relocating them to the new shores of Lake Nasser, where they are now enjoyed by thousands of daily visitors. One of the temple's halls is decorated with depictions of Ramses and his favorite wife, Nefetari, carrying sacred boats. Had it not been for UNESCO's intervention, they may have needed them. Under its Nubia campaign, UNESCO preserved 22 monuments and architectural complexes in all that were threatened by flooding from Lake Nasser. Along with the Abu Simbel temples, the temples of Phili, Amada, and Kalabsha were also preserved. Phili was considered to be the sacred burial ground of the god Osiris, who was one of the big boys of the Egyptian pantheon. By the 1960s, one-third of the temples at Phili were submerged by the waters of the Nile all year round. A coffer dam was built to pump out the excess water, and the temples were dismantled and rebuilt on higher and drier ground, thus preserving the hieroglyphic reliefs of the temple complex for future study. But who knows? Perhaps Osiris was not too happy about this, because he is the god of the annual flooding of the Nile after all. The Temple of Amada is the oldest Egyptian temple in Nubia. Its construction was ordered by King Tutmos III, who dedicated it to the Egyptian sun god, Ra. This pharaoh was considered to be the Napoleon of his time, having expanded the Kingdom of Egypt via 17 military campaigns and the capture of 350 cities. 
But back to the temple itself. In 1964, the French began the rescue of the Temple of Amida, a job which would take 11 years to complete. Unlike other temples, which had been chopped up and moved piecemeal to save them from being sunk by the Aswan High Dam into the annals of history, French architects contrived a way to move it intact using rail and hydraulics in order to preserve its precious paintings. Christian de Roche Noblecourt, a French Egyptologist, spearheaded the campaign to save the Temple of Amida from the waters of Lake Nasser. Its current resting place is less than two miles from where it first sat. And here is a bonus fun fact for you intrigued mind fans. Madame Noblecourt also hid the Louvre's priceless Egyptian treasures all over Free France during World War II. What a woman. Thank the gods that Kalapsha Temple was rescued before it could become part of the Aswan Dam sunken history. This temple is interesting in no small part due to its construction being finished off by the Roman Emperor Augustus. It was relocated some 30 miles south of the Aswan High Dam and placed on the World Heritage List in 1979. Its artwork reveals the Roman Emperor worshipping Egyptian gods, but he hid that one from Mother Rome, and bears an intriguing inscription in which the Roman governor forbids pigs to enter the temple. Presumably, swine had to worship elsewhere. Lake Nasser, named after the Egyptian president who oversaw the dam's construction, has the capacity to store water from two floodings of the Nile and spills over into neighboring Sudan to the south. Not only would the stored floodwaters be used for irrigation, it was also a source of hydroelectricity that only Egypt would benefit from, making the dam a political hot potato. For the Nubians, the high dam is a symbol of oppression, said rights activist Fawzi Geyer. It wiped out civilization. This leads us to the next, darker aspect of the Aswan Dam sunken history. Human inhabitants first settled the area around Wadi Halfa in ancient times, with the modern Old Town founded sometime in the 19th century. Old Town, which was situated on the banks of the Nile where the north of Sudan borders Egypt, featured telegraph lines, railway lines, a river monitoring station, and hotels including a railway hotel and the RR Hotel, which was a charming example of British colonial architecture. It was all completely destroyed after the construction of the Aswan High Dam by floodwaters. Like the building of Lake Lanier at Oscarville, Georgia, which you can check out in one of our other fascinating videos, the inhabitants of the Old Town at Wadi Halfa were forcefully resettled elsewhere as a result of Lake Nasser flooding. These people, who numbered an estimated 100,000, were Sudanese Nubians, and they were resettled on the shores of Lake Nasser and in other settlements in Sudan and Egypt. Approximately 310 miles of Nubian land along the Nile was flooded in 1971 as a result of the Aswan High Dam's construction, and 45 Nubian villages disappeared underwater forever. Australian journalist Catherine Franey met with a cab driver in Cairo when she visited Egypt in 2010. This man had grown up in Nubia. He recalled life before the dam, which he said was better. His entire family had to move from the banks of the Nile River to the desert. The man told Franey that life before the Aswan High Dam was like paradise. From paradise to life in the desert. No wonder these people were awarded compensation from the Egyptian government in 2019 for their losses. According to Australian radio broadcast channel ABC Radio, the loss of untold antiquities and relics under Lake Nasser is a source of regret for specialists working in the burgeoning field of Nubian archaeology in Egypt and Sudan. The building of the Aswan High Dam may have heralded an era of modernity for Egypt, but an archaeological paradise has been lost, along with the ancestral homelands of thousands of Nubian people. Thank goodness UNESCO saved what they could for us to continue to enjoy and learn from today, but the human cost and the loss of cultural heritage is nothing short of tragic. Not even the gods of ancient Egypt can remedy this man-made situation. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.